Greetings and salutations, relaxed gamer nation, and welcome to my look at Warfare 2 stuff. Yeah! Let's quickly take a look at what we have here. So let's uh, take a look at a few things here. So we have in the free update of Warfare 2, more guns, 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 and more guns. We have our static artillery turret with a range of 2,000 meters. All of these guns have bullet drop. The AI range I have not applicable because that depends on what AI controller you have attached to it. And we'll go over that later. Um, it has a 2,000 meter range, which is awesome. And let's see if I can. Sounds good too. Then we have our artillery turrets, which is a 2,000 meter range. Uh, this is only available on large grid. Um, bullet drop and an AI range of 800 meters. So the in integral AI on this is 800 meters maximum, even though it can shoot up to 2,000 meters. Uh, that's if you're manually controlling it. Let's take a quick up. Boom. That's reloading. <laughs> of course. I shot it earlier. Over here, we have the Assault Cannon Turret. Uh, the Assault Cannon Turret here is available for large and small grid. It has a range of 1,400 meter. Again, it has an integral AI of 800 meters. So when you fire it, it can go up to 1,400 meters and then go kaboom. Next is the Big Mama Jama, the Railgun. Uh, there is no turret version available, but we can actually make a turret with the next blocks I'm going to show off. Uh, this thing is a beaut. Uh, I am going to stand here and can I... Uh, dang it. Oh, wait, maybe. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I have a build vision on, so I can actually do this stuff. And fire. Look at that. Awesome. This is not just an energy weapon, but it does require energy in order to power up. It is a projectile weapon, and it has a range of 2,000 meters and has ultimate penetration. So we have custom turret controllers. We have a custom turret controller for a large grid, which has an AI targeting range of 800 meters. And we have the custom turret controller for small ship, which has an AI targeting range of 600 meters. This means that if you have AI enabled, it will target only up to 600 meters. You can still fire the weapons off to their maximum respective when you actually have a turret of your own set up. Over here, we have an auto cannon turret. This is only available for small ship, small grid. Uh, it has a range of 800 meters. Over here, we have an assault cannon turret. Uh, this is available for small and large grid, and it has a range of 1,400 meters. Uh, as well as those, you get the respective small grid weapons. So we have our auto cannon turret, or auto cannon, which has a range of 800 meters. Just fire that off. It's actually a nice, chunky sound. We have the Assault Cannon, which has a 1400 meter range. It takes a while to reload. And we have the Railgun of 2000 meter range. They all have bullet drop, as you can see with the arc. Uh, that's only effective when you're actually inside a uh, gravity well, not on a gravity ship so gravity generators will not affect the bullet drop range as far as i recall i have yet to test that and i think there's a few others that have yet to test it next things available for free are this small grid offset seat this only takes two blocks while the 
if we go with the regular passenger seat, requires at least a three block range. This allows you to fit it into smaller areas. Uh, it is not available for large grid. Only small grid. And then we have the turret controller here. And I need something to power this up. And we can press this button. And watch the bullet drop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's it for the free stuff. Now let's go over to this other platform, which has some not so free stuff. This is all DLC stuff. This requires a purchasing of the DLC for, uh, I think it was $4 in what, uh, around $4, 450 something like that for me in Canadian. So I think it's about $4, maybe $3.99 in American. And these are mostly reskins of currently available items. Now, the functionality is there's no difference whatsoever. It's just a visual difference. So right here, we have our warfare reactors. Uh, this is a small warfare reactor. It has two ports on it. The same as the other reactor, one on the back and one on the bottom. But it's much nicer to look at. And I'll be using this uh, when I use my reactors in all my series. This is a large reactor. Now, the funny thing about the large reactor is it has a small reactor built into it. But then it's got all the other cowling here to make it more powerful. And I put another small reactor on top of it just to show. Uh, unlike the vanilla reactor, this only has three access locations. The back, the top, and the bottom. There is no access location on the front. That's the only difference. But that would not bother me whatsoever. So there it is. Bottom uh, connection, top connection. But the real nice thing about this is that they're making use of these grates, graded catwalks, which is really awesome. I really appreciate that. And they've put some industrial, uh, industrial uh, beams in here as well, which is cool. Next, we have the Warfare battery, which comes in small and large grid. Uh, there is no really small grid battery. So like, uh, with this, you can actually put a little small grid battery on, or you can have this battery. The warfare battery is only the two by three. Okay. It's a two by two by three. Wow. That was hard. <laughs> it's just a reskin. Uh, nice though, is that they are making use of every side here. They're making every side look slightly different so that you can fit it into whatever your build want, whatever the builds you want. And I am going to be using these extensively because although the regular battery is nice and all that stuff, uh, it needs an update. Some people may not like the update. Some people may not want to pay for it, but it needs an update. So that's the regular battery and this is the warfare battery. Awesome, right? I like it. I like it a lot. And next, <laughs> this is going to change things a lot. These are our light panels. Uh, they have a radius of 20 meters, so you can only push uh, light out to 20 meters. But you can do this also, if you want, using just an LCD screen and adding a texture to it, like the white screen texture. Looks very similar to that, but this one actually casts out light, which is this is just ambient light. 
So if you want smaller, you want more light options that actually take up a full block in space, here you go. It's awesome. And you can also do things like this. See? Hi! <laughs> I got a bunch of panels in there. I colored some orange, I colored some white, and it's and there's a battery on the back of it. So I'm going to be using this a lot too, because as much as I like the previous the other lights, I there's some locations which I want to actually do something like this, put a light panel in. Next we have our heat vent block. This is useless. Uh, it's basically just, um, uh, cosmetic. Uh, you can open up these vents, like I have thrusters over here, and I have this little control set up for the thrusters. And they open up to certain portions, depending on how much power you're pulling. And you can change the color of that, like I think I have in here, I changed the color of it, I'm not sure. And they have a light radius of 10 meters when they're actually fully open. Uh, next we have our helm block. It's basically just another control seat. So it basically acts the same as any other control seat. It's just a standing control seat. And it's in large and small grid. Over here we have our Warfare Ion Thrusters. This is a reskin of the other Ion Thrusters. We had a previous war, uh, reskin, uh, what was it in... I forget which, uh, where the previous war reskin came in. I think it was Sparks of the Future. Maybe. And it's more of a wide thruster. So it's going to be great. I'm going to be using this extensively as well as probably many others. Because with this you can kind of go like, uh, as they are mentioning on the live stream, you can kind of do something like a Millennium Falcon type dealio, kind of, sort of. <laughs> and the Warfare Ion Thrusters reskin, the heavy, the large Ion Thrusters. These have five flames, so modders are going to be super happy being able to put a fifth flame or multiple flames on their thrusters. Their, each side is different, and each side they took care to actually do stuff with, which I appreciate because these are airtight. Uh, at least this part, the bottom part. Top part, not so much. Uh, next, we have our bridge windows. Now, these are basically just a reskin of the um, of these windows, but they're more. Oh, I can't hook this up. I'll just hook it up here. But they're more appropriate for like a bridge view. Like you have the little bottom part where you can have a little helm seat in here and be able to look around. Uh, there are two blocks in total for this. There's the full slant and the corner slant. And uh, that's about it for that. This thing I'm going to be using a lot, especially when I want to do bridges or like command centers or docking centers or anything of that sort. And that is it. Oh, this is also the small ship reactors, uh, warfare reactors, which I actually like a lot because with these things, you can put a column on top and make it look like it's one, like it's integrated on the small ones anyway. On the big one, not so much. I'm not sure what you could do with this. You could probably do something like Like this. Make it like a nacelle type thing. Something like that. It's got a little cap on it. 
Uh, and the other thing is this camel pattern, which I have over here. This is a woodland camel pattern. Um, you can, you know, typically you want to use it with green because it's woodland camel, right? But you can use it for all sorts of stuff. It does, just does not show up too well when you're dealing with black. It still shows up, but not that well. And if you go super black, oh, that is super black. It's got some weird lines uh, when you're using the black version. Even white for like maybe an Arctic camo. Or like orange camo or I have some brown, brownish like uh, plains camo up there. So that's it for the uh, Warfare blocks, the Warfare 2 updates, uh, DLC pack. Oh, and Dark Helmet. <laughs> that's about it. Now, let's get on to the custom turrets here. And how to set up custom turrets. It's pretty simple. Uh, even for these small turrets. Now, I, I wasn't sure how uh, how they did it initially, but then I discovered uh, a trick. Uh, if you... We're going to do something like this. We're going to do that. going to quickly show you how to set up the turret... We need a hinge, we need a rotor, advanced rotor. So we have our advanced rotor, then we put our turret, our uh, hinge on top. Now keep in mind that this little slash here denotes the back of the hinge. Uh, you can change it in the options, uh, like in the turret control options. But the way you set up this stuff is by, without build vision, for instance, because I use build vision. Let's put a control panel on here. Just gonna put it on here because it's actually gonna be used. And we have our hinge here. Actually, we are going to disconnect this little section um, in the ground. There we go. Now it's independent. It's an independent grid, and I'm going to put on a battery here. But uh, where was I? With the control panel, uh, you probably want to rename your hinges here. Right here, I have hinge one and another hinge one. So let's rename the one that's attached here to hinge base, hinge turret. So what we're going to do with the hinge base here through the control panel is we are going to add a small head. Okay. So that adds a small head to this. Uh, when you are in uh, survival mode, you'll need to up the, before you do the next part, you'll need to up the build vision or not the build vision, the breaking torque to something like that, just to prevent it from moving because when you have it like this, it's pretty much unpowered. Well, it is unpowered. And then from here, you take your blocks and you bring them all the way over to the center here. You put another one underneath, like so. And then you can actually put a small hinge part right there. Go into your control panel find your hinge turret or whatever you named it to and attach. You'll see the hinge move slightly like that. And this is now attached. 
doesn't look attached, but it is attached, and it will share ammo through the conveyor, which is definitely an interesting thing. Then you just get rid of these, because they're no longer needed. And there's your turret capability, your turret ability. Now, from here, you can do whatever you want with your turret within uh, reason. So, we can bring this out, bring it down. You don't want to go more than 3x3 three three on this, or these, because clang will happen. And then, you can even do something like this. If you wanted, say, a whole bunch of... Um, Assault cannons on here. Make sure your conveyor port is connected. And even though that's going through this connection point, it's not going to affect it. Lastly, you want to put a camera on here. Uh, since this, the, since a little slot is at the back, put the camera so the camera is facing where the little slash is, the camera uh, text. And there you go. There is your turret. But there's one more thing that we got to do. We need to hook up our turret controller, which I'm sure I had in here. There it is. Now keep in mind that the large turret controller can AI up to 800 meters, but if you're not going to AI these turrets, then you might as well use a small turret controller. But for this reason, for this purpose, I'm going to use a large turret controller. We're going to go into our turrets. And you have the azimuth rotor and the elevation rotor. Azimuth is your left and right while elevation is your up and down. So we have our advanced rotor as our azimuth and our hinge turret as our elevation and then the camera as the camera. Uh, if you have the little slash mixed, then you can change this to minus nine instead of nine. Angle deviation. Then you just select your weapons that you want to attach to it, add them. And lastly, you got to put down a seat of some sort, a control seat. In this case, we're going to put down a helm so that we're kind of showcasing the block. Just going to put it there. Now on your first button here, select your custom turret controller and go down to control and you're done. Now we have a turret. A big gun. This will do a lot of damage. Now, if you want to AI control it, you just go into your turret controller and go down beyond the add tool weapon and enable AI. And then you can up the arming radius. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, do I have an aircraft? I don't. I don't think I have a drone that I have set up. But that's okay. We'll, we'll take this. Actually, no, we're not going to take that because that will shoot back. We'll take this, which is something that I was able to make with, uh, with the new blocks. Oh, I forgot to tell you about the seat. That's okay. And we are going to change the owner of this. To... Pirates. Yes. And now that turret's going to come around. And... Destroy it. <laughs> 
Oh! <laughs> If there's terrain in the way, it's going to hit the terrain. Yeah, so turrets are definitely going to be fun. You can also make uh, make tools out of this. Like maybe make a turret for drilling or whatnot. So you can drill the ground easier. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please hit that like, subscribe, you know, all that stuff. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Ciao!